All right, day three. Hopefully you've learned something about the quadratic formula. Now, let's just talk about factoring real, qu real quick because maybe that will be easier for some of you. Remember, if you're talking about factoring, you need numbers that multiply to the last number but add to the middle. So we're looking for numbers that multiply to negative 20. All right, well, numbers that multiply to negative 20 would be like 5 and negative 4 or negative 5 and positive 4, 2, negative 10, negative 2, positive 10. All right, and then which pair adds to positive 8? That would be negative 2 and 10. So we put our two sets of parentheses with x in front of both, and we do minus 2 plus 10. If you know how to do this, just move on through that review. I'm going to show you these next ones real quick. Okay, you can just skip through this. Numbers that multiply to 1 and add to 2. Well, numbers that multiply to 1 are 1 and 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. X plus 1. X plus 1. Sweet. Last one. X squared minus 4X minus 21. What numbers multiply to negative 21? Well, I know that 7 and 3 do. And to make it work so that they add to negative 4, negative 7 and positive 3. So X minus 7 and X plus 3. All right, so now that we remember factoring, we're going to solve by factoring. So if we solve by factorings, all we do is we take our factors and we set them equal to zero. Equal to zero, okay? So if you can look at this example right here, x plus 5 and 2x minus 4, it's already factored out. They equal zero. So we just set both of these things equal to zero. All right, x plus 5 equals zero, 2x minus 4 equals zero. And we figure out what x would be. So we do minus 5 here. So x would be negative 5. And for this one, we add 4. So 2x equals 4. And we divide by 2. And x would equal 2. So our two answers to that problem are negative 5 and 2. Try this one on your own and check with somebody in the room to see if you got it right. Okay, I'm going to move on. All right, so now if we're going to solve an equation by factoring that. So I give you a problem. It's set equal to 0. You have to factor it first. So we need numbers that multiply to 8 but add to 6, like 4 and 2. So the first thing you do is you factor it. x plus 4, x plus 2 equals 0. All right, now that I have the two factors and they multiply together to equal 0, I just set each one equal to 0. So x plus 4 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. And then I just figure out what x would be. So minus 4 on both sides on this equation, x equals negative 4. Minus 2 on both sides in this equation, x equals negative 2. There we go. Got our answers. All right, next one. x squared minus 8 plus 12. Same story. We need numbers that multiply to positive 12 but add to negative 8, like maybe negative 6 and negative 2, because they need to multiply to a positive but add to a negative. So x minus 6, x minus 2 equals 0. Now that I know the factors, I just take each bubble, each set of parentheses, and set them equal to 0. All right, and I solve for x. Plus 6, plus 6 x equals 6, plus 2, plus 2, that would give me x equals 2. I've got my two answers. All right. How about you, I'll do one more for you, and then you can try the last one. If you already think you can do this, just move on. You don't need me. All right. So numbers that multiply to negative 6 but add to negative 5, well, <clears throat> let's think. Negative 6 times positive 1 would work. So x minus 6, x plus 1 equals 0. Again, if you need to make a chart of numbers, that's cool. Go ahead and make it. All right. I don't care about that. Set x minus 6 equal to 0. Set x plus 1 equal to 0. Add 6. Add 6. x equals 6. Take away 1. x equals negative 1. You got your two answers. Again, we're just solving by factoring. So it's just taking factoring one more step, okay? We already know how to factor. We just take it and we go one more step to find the x values that will give us the answer. 
last thing, these challenges. All right, so if the equation is not set equal to zero, you need to do that. I would write that somewhere on your paper, put stars around it, put a box around it so that you don't forget that it has to be set equal to zero. All right, so if it's not equal to zero, just move stuff. So this negative six, if I can get rid of it, make that zero, that'd be good. So let's add six to both sides. Now I have x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. Numbers that multiply to 12 but add to 7 I think are 4 and 3. So x plus 4, x plus 3 equals 0. Okay, now that I have my two factors, I can set both of them equal to 0. So I have x plus 4 equals 0 x plus 3 equals 0, minus 4, minus 4, I get x equals negative 4, minus 3, minus 3, I get x equals negative 3. Those are my two answers for the first challenge. For the second challenge, set it equal to 0. Good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck. If you haven't finished stuff from the first two days, do that now.